In 1990, when Nelson Mandela was released from prison, I was seven years old. So I wasn't really old enough to know a lot about him personally, a lot about his story. But my father was an immigrant to Canada from Nigeria. And I can tell you what Nelson Mandela meant to him and what he came to mean to me. He came to mean hope, a belief that uh, however dark, there would eventually be a dawn, and also wisdom. Uh, I'll never forget the wisdom he had to eventually step away, a man who could have been uh, president of South Africa, probably for as long as he wanted. And um, those are the things that I'll remember and that I'll take away from Nelson Mandela. He is, in my mind, one of the greatest men, uh, the, one of the greatest men, if not the greatest man of our time. What an extraordinary, extraordinary person. What a man of such great courage. He just symbolizes, personifies, embodies courage. I had an opportunity to meet uh, Mr. Mandela four times, actually. He came to uh, Ontario right after his leaving prison, and I was leader of the opposition at the time. Um, and we spent I don't know, about half an hour together, uh, really good conversation because I, th with a number of other people, a lot of other friends, been very active in the anti-apartheid movement, both when I was a student in England and, uh, and in, um, in, in Canada. And in the course of that, I mentioned to him a person that I know had been special to him in his, in his life as a great religious figure called Trevor Huddleston, who was a priest in South Africa and helped Nelson Mandela when he was a young man and knew him well. And I said, you know, I, I also am a very good friend of Trevor Huddleston. He said, you are? He said, you're a friend of Trevor Huddleston. I said, that's right. The reason I tell this story is because 11 years later, after I'd met him a couple of other times briefly in, when he came back as, prime minister, as president, uh, I was at a Rhodes Scholars reunion in South Africa. And, uh, we were all lined up to meet uh, President Mandela as we were walking into dinner. And uh, he, he saw my name tag and he looked at me and he said, Mr. Ray. I said, yes. He said, we've met before. I said, yes, we have. He says, and we both have a mutual friend. Uh, I said, that's right, sir. He said, Trevor Huddleston. And, uh, you know, we embraced briefly and chatted. He was a wonderful, uh, extraordinary man because we all go through public life meeting people who don't know who we are and could care less. And then there are people who actually listen and observe and are incredibly natural. He was a very funny man, very, uh, very unpretentious, very direct. Um, and uh, I, I can't think of anybody who's had a bigger impact on the politics of the world uh, over the last uh, half century. Um, when you think about it, we all grew up in, an, in as, as baby boomers, grew up with a couple of assumptions. One was that apartheid would always stay and that when it ended, it would be horribly bloody and, and, and horrendous. And the other one was that, that, the, that the, uh, the Cold War would go on forever and that the Berlin Wall would never come down and that uh, the, the battle between East and West would continue uh, for all time. Uh, and I think Mandela had everything to do with, uh, with ending, in a sense, almost both those struggles because he represented uh, a, a universal life force about human rights uh, and stood so far above it. Last thing I want to say is we spend half an hour in opposition and we're already bitter and trying to figure out how do we get back at the people uh, who are now in government? How do we do to them what they did to us or how do we make sure? And you know, here's a guy who spent 27 years in prison, comes out of prison and bitterness from everything I could see was completely alien to him. He didn't, he didn't have any sense of, he couldn't, he didn't have time for bitterness. So when he spoke at that dinner of, in, in uh, South Africa, he presented himself to the Rhodes Scholars and he jokingly said at the beginning, I am, I am the successor of Cecil Rhodes. And of course, everybody laughed and he laughed too, but he was making a serious point because what he was saying was, I am part of a tradition of leadership in this country. Some of the leaders were white for historical circumstances, which I can't do anything about and now they're black, and here I am, I'm your leader. And uh, I can't think of anybody who, who has personified more in my lifetime a sense of what uh, the best of public life is about, which is don't be bitter, and uh, remember that there are good people in opposition, and remember as well that you're gonna be on that side one day, and so you gotta, you've gotta govern yourself as much by the golden rule as you possibly can. And I, I, I think what he did uh, for South Africa is, is uh, just a part of what he has done and has continued to do for, uh, for the whole world. In a way that almost no other politician ever has, Nelson Mandela combined 
moral integrity with political pragmatism. He turned respect and mercy for your opponents into an opportunity to achieve a massive political change without bloodshed. There is almost no one else in history, perhaps Gandhi, who achieved the same extraordinary change for his people and by example, I hope, for the world. There is at the present moment no one like him. One hopes there will be others like him in the future. First of all, for South Africa, um, he was this incredible moral force. Uh, it, it was more than a political leader. He was a moral leader, and I, I think he, he, he caused the people of South Africa to be better, each of them, uh, caused the rest of us to be better. Uh, but the one other thing that I will say, and, and that to me today, I, just I, I'm reminded of constantly, is that other countries need to produce their own Nelson Mandela's. And that, that to me is the testament of how great he is. That when you talk about Egypt or Iraq or Afghanistan or, and we can go on a long list, that the words that I always hear are, they need their own Nelson Mandela. And, and to me, that speaks more about the import of the man, not just to South Africa, but to the world, uh, than anything I could say. He's become the gold standard in some respect of how to set a country on the right path. He, he suffered greatly. It did not diminish his spirit. It, it gave him the moral authority to, to make difficult decisions in a difficult place. Uh, and uh, he had, a, he had a, 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 a vision of where he wanted the country to go, and he was willing to take risks to get there. And, and uh, I think as, you know, believe me, I'm not in, in the league, but, but as somebody who's involved in the government process, I realize just how important that is. You've got to know where you want to go before you can get there. Uh, and he did that. And he is a model to us all, but he is somebody that so many places in the world, they need somebody like him.